situation is. Right. But you offer, you see, the, the, the point is this about the insurance. Mm. It dictates if, for example, you are in job group uh, L, mm. it says you can access care up to this level. But essentially, in insurance, it should allow you to access care unlimited in facilities because you are not you are, they, they, they they cannot tell what conditions you are by the time that you are investing this but this is limiting you based on job group not based on the type on the on the level of care that you need is this unique to doctors or is it common in the public service uh i may not know from other 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 public servant but what i know very well that civil servant nhf cover was common to all the civil servants and doctors are civil servants okay so it was getting across that's why even when the social health insurance act came into existence the civil servants in the whole country actually went into court so it's a common thing across the civil servants okay yes so are you getting the same with your nhif previously you have in the nhif previously there was no you, you, there was no limitation it was just the care you need mm. and that's why most of the time that's why we came out strongly saying that even those chef is in we need to have the comprehensive package because it's not, it is not a favor as i say that we have a medical allowance every employee has a medical allowance whether it's in a private sector or a public sector but as civil servant or public sector we relinquish this medical allowance mm. And the government said that they will top it up with the statutory deduction to then give us the comprehensive package. Mm. So here you're going to lose your medical allowance. And again, you are not provided for that particular care. Okay, yes. all the way. Last week we hosted the senator for Wasingishu County, who's yes. the chair of the health committee, yeah. the former two-term governor. Yeah. And he told us, you know what, we, he just cited the meeting that you've talked about here, the one that happened in, uh, was it October last year? Yeah. Where there was a meeting of various stakeholders yeah. from the council of governors to the senators to members of the national assembly to the ministry of health to the doctors unions and other health workers unions where you all agreed let's do let's work towards making these things better and you committed that we're not going to, to to go on strike and allow for the working teams to come together and work out uh, modalities the senator said that work has been ongoing and that he feels that this strike was premature ill-advised because then what you're coming to do is you're disrupting the work that has been ongoing you're losing the good faith that has been exhibited by everybody by coming to say we want our demands now and yet you had agreed that let's work comprehensively so that we can get all these issues ironed out for example the council of governors has also been saying we have we are the employee employers of the doctors the, employ the doctors want to go for postgraduate training. Who should take up the bill for postgraduate training? The conversation has been, should the national government, the Ministry of Health, which is in charge of training, take up this bill? And if they take up the bill, and I, as a county governor, have been left with a gap for a doctor who's away for two years, what do I do? So all these are conversations that have been going on. And then here you are. You said, we are downing our services, no services at all in the middle of this conversation uh, i think uh, there's one thing that people always misinterpret and then think that that's an absolute way to control workers that particularly is the term goodwill and i think a lot of time government misuse the word goodwill i've been told about goodwill all in my own my, my, my own engagements but goodwill i keep on saying is hand it's just like a promise that is kept becomes valuable if you have kept uh, honorable promises that we've had with you before then if you give me a promise then i know for sure if you give me a check and a promise and the check actually went through the next time you give me a check i know it will go through mm. but if you give me a check that goes and indicates there's insufficient funds the next time you give me a check i will not pick it that is what the government has been doing to us because you sit down have agreements and as i say this collective bargaining agreement was signed uh, it's binding between the government and the union and now we see it not being implemented. First of all, the union went to court in 2020 and uh, 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 demanded implementation of the CBA, the basic salary arrears. Mm. The government went to court claiming they've implemented it. We had to give our pay slips across the country to indicate whatever is in the CBA and whatever we have done has not been implemented. And the judge gave a ruling on uh, 28th of October 2021 that the doctors have not been paid these basic salary arrears and therefore the government is ordered to pay it within 60 days from 2021. I must say that there's nothing that was done. We followed up with the government all through. Well, in 2024, that time? Yes, up to 2024, not more than 611 days, 12 days that's not been implemented. Mm. We went to, uh, we, that's why we gave a strict notice in uh, 2022, December.
Well, now we're coming at the matrix that it will be paid in 60 days. Mm. Today, when we are meeting them over this issue, they say, okay, this is, should be paid by counties. Be, they now talk of counties and national on the issue. Mm. But the, and the person who signed this agreement is Honorable Sakaja, uh, the Madam CS. When? 4th of January, 2023. Okay. That they would be sorted by, by March 2023. Mm. Yes. So when you are coming out to the So, Dr. Chari, yes. when in October, you as doctors said yes. that we are signing on to this thing, after this meeting, we are not going to go on strike again. It was after March last year. We say... If already this matters had gone to court in 2022, yes. you had issued a strike notice in January last year. You had uh, agreed to have something by March last year. It yeah. had not happened. When you were sitting in October last year, it's after all these things. Why were you committing to not go on strike if you're going to go take us back into history? Let me explain to you, and it is well written as number 60 there, that we will have industrial harmony. And industrial harmony means that there's, engage, there's honest engagement between the employer and the workers. Mm -hmm. And actually strikes there in themselves enhance industrial harmony. Because therefore the, the employer is forced to sit with you at the table and discuss your issues. So you're saying that the industrial harmony was conditional? Industrial harmony is, 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 is a give and take issue. It's not saying that if I have industrial harmony with you that I will not go on strike. The strike actually enhances it because it made us sit and I will know what is the problem that I've not been solved. So in your understanding, in yes. October last year, when you were putting your signature on that dotted line saying yes. we shall have industrial harmony, harmony, in your understanding that did not exclude a strike? No, the, the industrial harmony cannot exclude your question of rights. So what, and you, that's why what, when you are going what is industrial this, harmony? Industrial harmony means you sit down, discuss issues with honesty and actually implement them or commit to implement them and do so, not just to pass time. So a strike in this case, from what you're saying, Dr. Terry, yes. is kind of like a reminder or a prick on the conscience to say, this is the conversation that we had when we sat down. Yes. Should you not fulfill your end of the bargain, then maybe we're going to go to the streets to kind of remind you about what we said when we sat down. Actually, strikes are the cornerstone of bargaining mm. in the sense that then it forces the employer to realize the value of the employee in the system. For example, what happens in this case, we have also the issue of interns who were then to be posted. We were told they'll be posted in 1st of April, but then we raised a concern. Why? Because the government has gone unilaterally to, uh, to change the, uh, the, the terms of engagement of mm. the interns from what it is the collective bargaining agreement. Mm. That means they are not honest. They're contempt to, con con the acting are in contempt within the document that you're working with them. They're acting in bad faith. Mm. Because it has already explained what needs to be earned by an intern doctor. They start saying that we need to redefine this particular term. The term has been exist in existence for the last, uh, the last 60 years. It's not a term that is only common to Kenya. It is the same term in, 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 uh, in Australia. It's the same term in South Korea. It's the same term in in in, in, uh, in USA. The term medical intern. Medical intern. It yeah. does not change the work that they're doing. Mm. Yes, but here now they say no. We have other interns in the country that are getting uh, twenty-five thousand or thirty-five thousand. Why are we having these interns getting this amount of money? Now we have to reduce it by ninety-one percent, forgetting that there is a CBA that anchors the the terms of engagement of these particular doctors. Mm. Okay, let me ask this question. Yeah. What really is the problem here? Because every time we have this discussion. There is then the matter of, well, health is devolved. Yes. So this is a county problem. So then the question is, so where does the national government come in when it is a county problem? And yet, everything that you say simply relates to doctors. So who is it that we are holding responsible for this? I think it's... Uh is a ping pong game of the government and the way not to be accountable to the issues because when you talk about health care the universal health care agenda is an agenda of the president and it is being driven by the cabinet secretary not by the governors in the counties when you talk about health being uh accessibility of health it's a, it's a government issue but now the government always decides to uh to know where to direct workers when these times come in because i saw very yesterday where governor sakaja was uh, telling other governors that we are the employees of these doctors and they need to return to work otherwise the face being sucked we've had governors speaking like that before but these governors come and go we remain in the system i must say and one very important thing is that the same governor who was speaking like that is the governor who sat down with me 
and the CS to sign the document on the commitments of implementing this is this thing for all government for all doctors across the country because he was the chair mm -hmm. of the labor committee in the council of governors we must look into it that where does finances come for this particular uh, thing because when <clears throat> most of the time like what we are demanding in the cba 2017 2021 the the arrears that hold to doctors for seven years i have told governors that if a governor feels like he wants to in, 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 uh, intimidate or victimize any doctor. He should just hit the doctor's account with that arrears. Just mm. go pay those doctors the arrears mm. of seven years and tell us, hey, me as a governor, I've already paid them. They should be working. Because each and every county signed this CBA. Mm. And if no governor has paid them, they have no moral authority mm. to actually say, no, these are my doctors. Mm. Because we know that all our taxes goes to one basket. That is the exchequer. The county government say that they do a salary delays because there's delay of funds from the exchequer. So as much as there's Ulbalu and talks that health is devolved, the funds and the finances for health are not devolved. They're from the central point. <laughs> There may be some other activities that are devolved, but then the finances are not devolved. Mm. The, health, the health of Kenyans is not devolved. The service provision that they need is still from the same institution, same unit. And even the, the face of healthcare in the country is still under one, Ministry of Health. Mm. And I must really bring it more that why are we so keen to say health is devolved when we come to actual healthcare service delivery, but when we come to driving the universal healthcare, where well, we know in the constitution that the primary healthcare is under the county governments, but we have seen the Ministry of Health and the national government having a keen high on this particular process to the mm -hmm. point that they have taken a drive to engage more than 100,000 community health, uh, health, health workers. What mechanism are they used now mm -hmm. that makes health now a national project and not a devolved function? Let's is it because of, the, uh, because of the donor funding that is making them have a keen interest? <laughs> because if health was devolved, really, we will have community health promoters being under the counties and no any engagement with the national government. And yet, that's not one of the complaints that you're raising. I have an issue with that as well. Yeah. As doctors, why aren't you raising that as an issue? 25 minutes to 9, Dr. Davji Atella is the Secretary General of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union. He's our guest today. Doctors are still on strike. What day is it now? The day 12. This is the 12th day of a strike by doctors countrywide. What is it doing to our health system? How should this matter be resolved once and for all? We'll be back shortly. For more sports, more action, and more fan celebrations on Star Times. On, on, on Star Times. Stream and catch up on your favorite games. Download the Star Times on app now. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Conventional conversations meet groundbreaking insights. So do not be afraid to venture to the unknown. Social media has uh, really revolutionized how people are doing business, how they're getting their next client. The language of creative business is not specifically like a course. The late night business gives you access to great minds and stories to enable you start, grow, or take your business to the next level. Join me, Ian Dennis, each and every Tuesday at 10 p.m. for the late night business. My dream has been to try and see if basketball can pay. What's your expectation as a Manchester United fan? Garnacho! Come on, Meanza. Ugovakiti. Unakoseanga sana. And you being a grand audience of Ekosea because this year, 2024, it's a big, biggie, biggie tena sana. Usikose. Nimoto. 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 The Southern Bypass. You decide. Let's talk on Spice of MKE on X hashtag. The Situation Room. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 
94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Dr. Harry, last week, the head of public service, Felix Koske, had a conversation with all of you. And it seemed that there was some headway having been sent by the president. Many speculating and maybe sidestepped the CS uh, because it seemed as though all this time negotiations were not happening. President stepped in through his, uh, through his head of public service and uh, it seemed as though there was light at the end of the tunnel. And so there were many things that were said. Number one, is the CS not able to handle matters at the ministry? Are we going to listen to the president now when he said, let's have a proper conversation about what can happen? Where are the thoughts around this? Because at the end of the day, like we said, the one constant in all of this is that the doctors are still on strike and that there's no uh, help service now being offered at public hospitals from a doctor's point of view. Yes. Uh, I think the meeting we had uh, on uh, Thursday last week was a court-directed uh, meeting mm -hmm. because... Uh, uh, the government, the way they always do that, when we start industrial actions, they will go to court to stop the process and mm. then uh, use that court order to really say that now court has given directions, go back to work. But then this judge really, because uh, we had to all have a hearing in the court, we gave uh, the synopsis of the issues that we have brought before the court, that we have had conciliation before, that took 13 months, uh, 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 more than the recommended 30 days. And all the issues that we want to go and reconciliate have already been reconciliated. There's a report that has already been released. The only gap we have here is the implementation and lack of that commitment. But then the judge then now directed that this needs a whole of nation approach. It may not be considered as an issue just of ministry, because therefore ministry will be giving commitments, yet they do not know or they do not understand the financial implication of the same. And therefore, he said there will be a whole national approach to it. is headed by the head of public service, uh, finance, uh, uh, cabinet secretary for finance, cabinet secretary for labor, cabinet secretary for public service, chairman public service commission, uh, uh, the, the cabinet secretary minister of health, and the union and the central organization of trade union and FKE. Mm. But this order was like order number four. Mm. And then the court uh, said that then after that, the meeting will come back to, and also they made this, he said, plus all the 47 governors mm -hmm. and the Council of Governor. So therefore, this meeting was conveyed past one to that particular order of the court. So when we went to that meeting, I think for the, from the Council of Governors, there was only one governor uh, who was the governor of Nandi. The rest of the governors is not enough for the meeting. But then we had all these particular ministers, uh, and all the cabinet secretaries and the team. So the first instance, uh, the, uh, the, the, the conciliator uh, gave a report of the 19 issues that we had raised in our industrial strike our our notice and therefore the team agreed to convene a subcommittee which is made of 13 people to look into these particular matters mm. and prioritize them into a uh, short term uh, medium term and long term mm. and also the the, or the the resolution but one fundamental reason why the judge sent us to this set up this particular committee is because he said these are perennial issues that need warrant a serious uh, the, one of the serious uh, effort to be implemented. But in our meeting that we had that night, it was just reading those issues. Mm -hmm. There was no plan yet for implementing them. And based on what I said, goodwill is earned from previous commitments that actually get fruitful results. We've had commitments before. So the things must be given results. There's some things that we cannot say we will, it will be done. They have to be done. There are some things that we must actually see the outcome of them, especially those things that we over over discussed with government. These things like where they're contravening the, the CBA on interns. Mm. We don't need, because uh, uh, they were saying now we need to change the name, two months policy. We don't need that. We need them to print letters mm. for the interns as per the CBA, because they're the ones who are now over, over, over going through the back door to change that law. Mm. The, the things of our basic salary arrears that was signed in 2017, that was ordered by court in 2022, we don't need to wait about that. So what did you tell them in the meeting? It, exactly what I'm telling you. So it doesn't me. matter who's sent on envoy. It doesn't matter who's saying, let's come to the table properly. We are, on the table. We are saying we're yeah. on the table. But what we are saying, essentially, is that the things that we have agreed to, from what I hear you saying, the stipulations of the 2017-2021 yeah. CBA are yet to be completed. Yes. It doesn't matter if God himself comes from heaven and says, let's talk. You'll say, that's great, God, but this is a CBA. Let's implement it. 
No, but if you know when God did anything. Well, I mean, it's an it's an example <laughs> that I'm giving, but because this is where my question I, I, came I, I, from. I, I, like let's the let's move was, God. Let's okay. The let's say the president. If the which president is what exactly what happened? Yes. This is exactly what happened in the person of Felix Koske who came and said, "Guys, let's talk about this." But you've said, "Yes, we are talking." But what we are saying is, 2017, 2021 CBA. Let us mark the stipulations of it and complete it and let's deal with these other issues which you have said you agreed to the implementation of is that what you're saying yes actually what happened is that on that particular evening on that night there was nothing that was offered to us from the government on the 19th issue that we addressed there's nothing absolutely that i said no this is what i'm going to do this time this time, from number one to number 19. Mm. and therefore that's why the things were put sent to the subcommittee but so it is almost an impossibility by us putting these particular issues in the subcommittee and asking us to suspend the strike mm. because we know and we have understood this particularly all the times that when we go back to work and say fine let the committee handle this thing go it will take another one year like it did last year because we were in good faith and mm. suspended the strike before it commenced mm. last year mm. and it took 13 months to solve a 30 days issue so therefore what will make it a difference that if we really suspended this particular strike and say fine there's this committee who committee was it has been said set mm. up and to give you a bit of shock the multi-agency committee that was set up in this meeting of of thursday and the same people in the multi-agency committee that was sorted out was that was set up last year uh, april so really, the person that are going to really handle this thing is the same. So they have institutional memory. They have institutional memory. They understand <laughs> the issues. That's but why, to us, we believe that if there is commitment from government, they have to tell us this is we're sorting this this time. When is the first meeting of the subcommittee scheduled? Uh, they met on uh, Friday last week. Mm -hmm. uh, then that report was presented to the head of public service on Saturday. Mm -hmm. They are meeting again today. Mm -hmm. yes. Another one today. Yes, at 3 p.m. What do you expect to come out of these meetings? I expect a resolution to the issue that you have set up. Mm. You know, it is, it's, it's not right to call me for a meeting, mm. for example, and you have had a strike notice for seven days on the issue that we want to be implemented. Then you ask me, what is the bare minimum of them? Mm. Mm. It is important as a person who has read this thing for seven days and has seen a notice, has been seen the strike going on for 10 days, yep. to say from these issues, I can implement this and this. Because then that means there's genuinity, there's honesty. Yeah. But we have been getting the flip side. Mm -hmm. You meet uh, the minister and he says, no, these things will be sorted. We have we have progress. You meet the minister of labor, they tell you, no, there's progress. Uh, there's goodwill. Uh, you meet uh, uh, this other team, they ask, what is the bare minimum? So you, we can, all the things we put in our strike notice to us is a bare minimum. Mm -hmm. It is now the employer to tell us what, what out is of this. The For example, uh, the particular case here, we have doctors who are employed on contractual terms in Kenyatta National Hospital, where they're paid a third or a quarter of salary of the other ones on permanent and pensionable terms. We have the same in QTRH, we have the same in MTRH. These doctors, despite they know that they are on casualization, mm. and they, they, they're convinced that the terms they're in is contravening the existing laws, both ILO conventions and the existing labor law in the country, mm. they risk to go on strike. So tell me, how would I call of a strike or suspend a strike when this doctor is not sorted it means i'll be hanging this person hmm. yeah so you see therefore to me the things that are right in the strike notice are all bare minimum it is now the government side to look at because those are things that can be changed within a second they can all be done yes i want to understand something in this meeting that was held with the head of public service felix koske uh among those that attended were cabinet secretaries of yes. course the cabinet secretary for health i saw her there yes. i saw the cabinet secretary for labor I uh, was also sort of public secretary in charge of public service, right? Uh, the principal secretary in uh, the National Treasury was present, I believe, right? Yes. And then there were senior directors from the Ministry of Health, yes. the Director General for Health, and others were present, all doctors, plus yourselves. When I saw the head of public service come out to talk about, you know, the, the terminology intern and versus intern versus we were confused and we seek, were seeking to understand, I asked myself, why would a cabinet secretary or senior government officer, public officer like a head of civil service not understand what a medical intern is? Is it that the, the people of the Ministry of Health do not understand what a medical intern is? They are doctors. Did they not go for internship? What was this issue? What was, what was being discussed in that room? When the question was raised, how was it framed? 
you know, the doctors working at the Ministry of Health sometimes happen to be let down in this particular conversation because they act like puppets and remote controlled individuals in their dispensation of duty because they understand and they know these things. And in fact, in the meeting that we had with the CS when he told us they're going to change the interns policy, mm. the person who was to be in charge of that was the Director General, who knows that there's CAP 253, who knows that there's CAP 244, who knows the definitions of intern and the duties that they do. But in this particular change of policy was a reduction of the salary by 91% to there for them to be like other interns. So I think it is just, um, it's more of a, bot a top up, uh, approach on the issues here mm. whereby the minister is made believe that these particular interns are earning excessively beyond uh, their, their job that they do because she doesn't know it's not because she knows and therefore she feels that these interns need to earn this particular amount of money that's pegged in this direction mm. and therefore she tells the technical persons to make it be as she has said okay I so must, therefore, uh, because these people fear, hmm. or because they cannot be honest with themselves, they, they adopt that to be the approach of conversation. Again, I still don't understand. Yeah. Okay. So, the cabinet secretary who joins a ministry of health, yes. she's not the first one. There have been others before. There have been other principal secretaries. They find the technical people who understand yes. the health sector. I mean, start from the director general of health, yes. downwards, doctors. In this administration, we have people who are advisors to the president yes. on matters of health Poor doctors, doctors. Yes. how is it possible that a government can actually sit down and say we don't understand what this intern is doing why should this intern be paid the same as this intern and yet these are interns who are in law these are interns interns who come out of a, a university to go and, and they're doing communication there's no law on internship but for doctors, there's a law on internship. There is law in Are you telling me that the doctors who are advising the president are not being heard? The doctors who are running the Ministry of Health are not being heard? That would be confusing even what medical intern is. The technical person or the chief of staff for the cabinet secretary is a doctor and was a chairman of our union in one of the branches. So you get the point. So when we're saying that uh, it may not be from the adversary aspect of these doctors, because the first interview that was done by the cabinet secretary in Jeff Kunanga Live, he lamented strongly on interns, interns uh, remuneration. In the first particular interview, that was done on, on 22nd of November uh, 2022. And other therefore, two years, one, 16 months later, mm. this is now being reflected with disregard to collective bargaining agreement, disregarding the existing cap to the, the laws that actually support this. And then they, they, they want to use the definition of the Public Service Commission of interns to really apply to these ones where we have already different definitions and the actual work they do. But at the, at the, on the flip side, they, you see, they don't have a common stand. Mm. They speak, they have double speak. Today they'll say, no, the interns are the cornerstone of health service provision in the country. They provide 30% of health care. Tomorrow they'll say, no, an intern should not act like this. Okay, let's change the them to the junior doctors or the foundation doctors and let's change the policy. But there's a catch. When you change the name of the interns to junior policy or to foundation doctors, then they're not going, they're going to be out of the collective bargaining agreement. It means that you have to renegotiate their salary. And therefore, SRC, which can respond to the cabinet secretary in 36 hours and does not respond to our CBAs in six months, will just approve that in the next six hours. Yes. You have to ask, what really is the problem? The problem is the government not prioritizing health care as they speak. If the government was speaking and doing what they're saying, we would be on strike. You don't think there could be a very good reason why it is they're not able to actually come to the terms of the CBA? Yeah. I will put a hypothesis on it, but mm -hmm. the reality is there are bigger forces, really, that is making healthcare not work, particularly public healthcare. Because by the time you reduce the salary of an intern by 91%, it means that if this intern gets out of market and therefore somebody offers them a salary of 80,000 or so, they would actually be able to, to accept because that's an increase. So, but are they able to live a decent life with that? And that is totally out of the, of the CBA. This is something that even IMF and the privatization uh, team have always been working on. There's a scheme they're working on to see to it. How can you make the, health, the doctors in Kenya uh, not affordable, but uh, exploitative? They are 
working with mechanisms to exploit them. Mm. And that the point that they're going to start with is, is internship. Mm. And I must tell you that last year, Salary and Remuneration Commission decided to unanimously give all the employers in the country a letter or a directive to reduce the salary of doctors by about 40,000 each across the country. That, is, that was non-practice allowance. We had to go to court to stop that particular process and we got a judgment at the end of the year which was say, telling SRC that they have no absolute right to actually direct an employer to do the salaries. We have seen this year the Auditor General in, uh, in the report that they were giving from Meru County, they are saying the allowances that are paid to doctors, that is the non-police allowance, the call allowance that we got after this 2017 strike are illegal. And what was his basis of reasoning that the CBA that uh, uh, twenty-one expired without knowledge that CBA doesn't expire. The CBA only expires when a new CBA has been agreed upon. So there are bigger forces behind this particular process that we are fighting. Because if they succeed in reducing intern salary, then nobody is safe with the mutilation of this particular uh, CBA. Mm. As things currently stand, the CS, yes. Ministry of Health, yeah. is responsible for streamlining and guiding a lot of these things yes. right now. Yes. Essentially, we're seeing that this impasse is, an, is right under her docket. Yes. As things currently stand, do you see that this will be sorted under her? Will she be able to sort this out? Do you think that that will happen? I, I can absolutely say that she may not be able to sort out these issues because she is the one who has brought the problems. And why am I saying that? Because when you know there's a collective bargaining agreement that is in existence and you decide unilaterally to change or to disown it or contravene it by reducing the terms of engagement of interns by 91%, it means you don't respect that collective bargaining agreement. Therefore, how are you going to resolve it? Number one. Number two, the issue of postgraduate training. We know very well we have had commitments before that mm. these doctor's fees will be paid because they are bonded by the county governments. This was done in our agreement of January 4th. Mm. And you realize that one and a half years later, this has not been done. So. If you don't understand the issues and you give commitments to them and you go and trouble on them, then you have no goodwill whatsoever to actually sort them out. It may not be an issue. It, 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 be, it, will be, it, it is both an issue of goodwill and the issue of capacity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you have goodwill for somebody who doesn't understand the issue, it becomes a bit, prob a bit problematic. And that's what we are experiencing. Therefore, the advice that you will be giving the PAC or the SRC or the, bo the different bodies then will be contravening already existing. Because if she was honest, she would say, no, this CBA exists like this. I cannot vary the terms of these doctors. But I'm with, it. I'm with her in court now, where she's saying, this is what you could afford. But the court is saying, no, but this was signed. It has been paid like this for the last seven years. It has been paid. They have been called interns since 1968. Mm. So the only way out of this, from what we see today, is the actual, tangible, seeable implementation of these things. Because from what you've said, it's usually a call back to work has been, okay, come back to work, we'll sort this out. But it has never happened. Yes. So what you're saying is that we see interns going to their posts. We see that uh, these allowances being paid. We see the completion of the CBA. That happening is when doctors will go back to post. I'm saying that we, need, we don't need uh, promissory notes okay. anymore. We need action and uh, uh, clear actions on the issues. Mm. For example, the intern thing, uh, it is the, uh, and I keep saying it is the government on strike. Mm. Because the issue of interns for us, by the way, is more of an issue. Mm. Because it was a problem that was created this month by the cabinet secretary and the SRC. And it was an issue that they have to resolve. And how do they resolve it? They just go back to the CBA and print the letters that align with the CBA. Printing the letters will take the government one day. Mm. That's one. Did you not hear Yes, or did I misread that the letters were ready for collection? Yep. Yeah. But they're ready with erroneous terms that are going to turn the interns into captives. So the problem is the amount that they're going to be getting. The amount that are going to get. It's not the amount. It's the contravention of this collective bargaining mm, agreement. Mm. The amount, if we had the amount of that 7,000 in the CBA, then there will be no problem. <laughs> but when you mutilate it, in the figures that you think befit this person, when, you, when there was an agreement that was signed over it, then that's a problem. The, again, uh, the, the, the issue of... How much, how much does the CBA say that uh, an intern doctor should be paid? A basic salary of 42,970. 42,000. 42,970. And allowances that are attached to it. Okay. So this was... So, so, all so, that, so the total comes to? A, a, a gross of about 200, 150 there about. Okay, now. Depending on the location. Okay, now. So, so what exactly... 
the, this letter that purportedly was ready, what then did it state? In, in what was the amount that was in This indicated? letter removed all the gross allowance, the allowances they were getting. So it was an absolute consolidated rate of 47 to 70,000, depending on the, 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 the thoughts of the, of the ministry. Uh, so from the around 200 to about 70,000. To about 47. About 47,000. That's, about 47, low, that's, 000, that's yes. what that's what someone would be getting. It's about 93 percent uh, downwards. Mm. Okay. Dr. Terry, should this internship requirement be removed? Should a doctor who graduates after six years in medical school be recognized as a doctor immediately? The problem that comes with that, uh, I must say, is, uh, is, is, is what services will they be offering to the people? Because you see, the, as an intern's graduate, is a doctor. And is, uh, they have gone through the clinical services for the uh, three years or four years, depending on the university, and you're qualified to offer the services. But then we don't, we deal with human, you deal with human beings, you don't deal with robots or with mm -hmm. machines. So that's why there's a certainty that need to be taken for one year that you go to the hospital, you actually, when you're in the maternity, when you are in the pharmacy, when you are in that particular dental clinic, how are you handling these particular patients? So that's why there's a logbook that records the incidences of your services that you're offering. So that there is absolute confidence that if you're not let alone, mm -hmm. You're offering services that will not endanger mm. the lives of Kenyans. While you are while, while at internship, you're mm. actually doing the services. Yes. Only that you are doing so under supervision yes. of somebody else. Thank you very much, Doc, for coming. Um, we'll keep inviting you to get to understand what more needs to be done. And particularly the next time you come, you'll be talking to patients who are seeking to go to hospital. One of them may be Dr. Dab Giatella, who is in an emergency and is landing in a public hospital and the doctors are on strike. Dr. Davji Atela is the Secretary General of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union. He's been our guest. Time for the news, 9 a.m.